Welcome to Super Easy Physics and Mathematics. Today we are looking at the solution to Cambridge IGCSC, alternative to practical variant 3, October, November 2022. This is a strategic solution that will help you to ex Cambridge Physics of a practical in 35 minutes. Total duration for the practical exam is one hour. You are expected to answer all questions and then the total mark for the paper is 40 marks. Question one. A student investigate boiling dimension of a boiling tube so and he pour water initially at the base this one that is that will become the h node the initial level and why the student have to pour this initial level because he want to find the diameter of this boiling tube but the diameter is not uniform so at the base the diameter this base here does not have a uniform diameter. So you need to pour water so that you cannot use this uniform side to measure the internal diameter of the. So the student pour water, a small amount of water into the boiling tube and measure the height from the table. So what is the height? 2.6, that is H0. Suggest one precaution that is taken when measuring the height of the water level. One, you view the scale perpendicularly. So you place your eye at this level perpendicularly to it to avoid error due to parallax. Then you hold your ruler close to the boiling tube so that then you set square, push the set square so that you can easily measure the value. Then the next thing the student uses a measuring cylinder graduated in CMQ to add a volume of water 5 cm cube to the boiling tube so we add 5 cm cube to that initial one every time and then he measure the height now measure and record the first rule so let's do this so you measure this and from the base that is 4 cm from the bench so you put the value there then for you to measure h so the value of H is you have the what is the increase in the height? You know there was an original val, uh, initial volume that is added. So to get the increase in height, will now be this new height take away the original volume that was there. That is the H naught. So so if you do that, 4 cm take away the 2.6 initial volume that will give you this volume here one point so the capital h increase in height is 1.4 cm now plot the graph of v square square on y axis against h on x axis so we want to plot this so first of all find your scale then if you look at it your value for v range from 5 to 25 so each of these will be I can say each is 5, 5, 5, 5 to 30. Then the base, you range from 1.4 to 7. So I do the same thing, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now let's plot the first place. 5 cm, when the volume is 5 cm, the increase in height is 1.4. So we we'll have that. Then the second one, when it's 10, we have 2.9. When it is 15, we have 4.1. Then when it is 20, 5.7. Then when it is 25, we have 7. So draw your line of best fit. Then from this, let's say you find the, find the gradient G show clearly how you find it so let's take our triangle and you take your triangle from where the line cross 
So you take your triangle, so this one will become your Y. So take note, the Y, so what is the increase here? So the increase is 30, take away 7, that is 23. The increase on the vertical axis, that is the increase in volume, 23. So let's find the increase in the height, horizontal axis. So if you read those values, so we have 6.6 cm. So with that, we can find the gradient that is increasing in volume over increase in height. So with that, you can get your units. CM cancel CM cube. We are left with CM square. So that is the gradient. Now, determine the diameter of the boiling tube. So to get the diameter, that is square root of 4 multiply the gradient divided by pi. So we can substitute our value. The diameter is 2.1 cm. So the acceptable range, according to the market scheme, is from is this range here. So our answer is correct. So suggest so why it was important for the student to add a small volume to at the base of the water of the start of the experiment. Think the reason is that inside diameter near the base is not uniform. Okay. Another student used the experiment. This is for that. So why is state one reason why this is not accurate method to use for this small test tube? Now, if if the test tube is not a big one and you are using a small one, now the volume, water volume is small. So, and then because the volume that you are adding, it add one cm. So there is large or sent or sanity in measuring the volume inside the cylinder. Okay, as you want to measure this volume, so it is difficult for you to get it accurately. The second reason, the test tube diameter is small, so there's you can't get accurate reading. Then height changes small, so as you are increasing the volume. Is very small and you know that your meter rule that you are using the smallest value you can measure in the meter rule correctly is 1 cm but if you say 0 0.5 that is an approximate value you are not too sure okay now a student perform an experiment on the cooling of water container in a beaker he investigate the effect of the color of the outside surface of the beaker on the rate of cooling. He used the apparatus, a beaker A covered with black card. That is beaker A covered with black card, then beaker 2 covered with shiny foil. So you have, so when you look at this, so you use the thermometer, you put the hot water, then use the thermometer to measure the initial the temperature of the water. So let's read this one. The room temperature, that is the temperature of the room before where the experiment is taking place. It's recorded by this, and then this is your last session. So let's read it. That is 22 degrees Celsius. The student pour a volume of 150 cm cube of hot water into beaker A and record the temperature at T naught. That is what is initial. So describe one precaution that can be taken to ensure that the temperature reading is accurate as possible. You view your reading vertically. Wait until the reading, the rising stop. Avoid the thermometer touching the beaker. Okay. And then the student take the reading every 30 seconds. She repeats the process for Bika B, the one with shiny. Add units to the column heading in the table. So the first one, we have time measured in second. 
The second one, temperature of the beaker measured in degree Celsius. Then the beaker B, temperature is measured in degree Celsius. Write a conclusion stating if the color of the outside surface of the beaker affects the rate of cooling of water in the beaker. Justify your answer with reference to value from the results. So, we want to look at if the color outside affects the rate of cooling. So, we have to look at, we have two here. We have the black surface and we have the shiny metal foil. So, this is white and this is black. So, looking at the figure, which one do you think cool faster? So, from 86 degrees Celsius, in 80 seconds, for the black, the temperature dropped from 86 to 68.5. Then, for the black surface, it dropped from 85.5 to that. So, you can make reference. So, the black beaker A cools faster than beaker B. This is the statement. That is the conclusion we have arrived from looking at the figure. But when you have a question that says justify your answer, what they are expecting you to say is to make reference to the value. So now, we now say, let's look at the drop in temperature. So you say over 180 seconds because a temperature dropped by 17.5 degrees Celsius. How did we get that? Subtract the temperature after 80 seconds from the initial temperature. So 86 take away that will give us 17.5 degrees Celsius. Then for while in Bika B, temperature dropped by 7 degrees Celsius. 85.5 degrees take away 78.5. Calculate the average cooling rate for the water in Bika A during the experiment. So, so substitute the value. The initial temperature and then for beaker A, initial temperature 86, then the final temperature divided by the time taken to measure the cooling. So if you do that, the cooling rate, you get the unit for cooling rate. What is the unit on top on the numerator divided by unit denominator? So that will be degree Celsius per second. So that is the cooling rate for the first beaker. Then, let's find the cooling rate for Bika B. So, the cooling rate for Bika B is this. So, you can see that a student states that the black card is a thermal isolator. He thinks this will affect the result. Suggest an additional experiment to test this theory. Now, if the card covering the container it's an insulator, so it affects the rate at which uh, heat is transmitted between the container and the surrounding. So if you want to test that theory, all you need to, to do, do an experiment whereby the card will not be there. You replace it with something else, so you will not compare the value. So in this case, let's look at the option of painting the container. So you can use containers that are painted. So paint the surface is black. So you can paint the container, okay, black. So if you use container that the surface is painted black, you cannot carry out the same experiment again and find how the effect is black. Suggest two variables which should be kept constant for the additional experiment that the comparison with this experiment to make it fair. So if you want to have a fair test, so we have the initial temperature for the experiment should be kept constant. Then you should use the same volume of water since you are comparing. The first one we use 150 cm cube. So if you are painting the container, you want to compare the result, you must use the same value. So use also 150 cm cube. Now use the same room temperature. So you perform the experiment in the same room temperature so that you can compare them. Now, state how the cooling rate of this will compare with that of B. Now, now, the 
cooling rate for the new experiment is that you have removed the cover. The first one there is cover. So this one you have removed the cover. So what will be the difference? So if you look at it, the one without cover should have a higher cooling rate than the one that have paper covering it. The reason is that paper is a poor conductor of heat. So the removal of the paper allow faster flow of heat across the painted surface. So that's why the cooling rate of the painted container is higher. Subscribe and we will help you to easily upgrade your performance to an A+. CPAM is the solution to better grade. Okay. Some student investigate circuit containing resistor in parallel. They use the circuit diagram shown in figure 3.1. A resistor S is connected in series with resistor P and Q connected in parallel. The ammeter is used to measure it. So we have the power source here, and then you have the circuit. Complete the circuit with a voltmeter connected to measure the potential difference across the parallel combination. So across this parallel combination, measure the PD across it. So you fix your voltmeter parallel to that. So that is the combination. So with that diagram, we have your one mark. Now. A student measure the potential difference across the parallel combination. Okay, you measure the potential difference across the parallel combination. So this is it. Read the value of V and IT. That is the total current flowing to it. So this measures the voltage. This is the voltmeter reading and this is the ammeter reading. So the voltmeter reading, that is... 1.4 volts because this is one and then this is two in between you have 1 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 1.7 1.8 1.9 then two now but for the ammeter reading this is 0 0.6 and then this is 0 0.8 so here is going to be 0 0.7 so in between each one will be two two so this is seven 7.2, 7.4, 7.4, 7.4, then 7.6. So that's 7.6 ampere. Now, calculate the resistance ROPQ. That is the resistance across the effective resistance across the parallel combination using the reading that we have just measured. So we have V divided by the total current. So if you substitute, you have that. So the, the parallel resistance is going to be 1.84 ohms. Then the student connects the voltmeter to measure the potential difference Vs across resistor X. That is across resistor S. You want to measure the the voltmeter, the PD across this. Now, read the value of the potential difference across resistor S. This is the value. So you have 3 and then you have 4. So 3.5, 3.6. So you have that 3.8 volt. Use your reading to measure the resistance across resistor X. So Vs over IT. So substitute Vs over IT. Vs is 3.5 divided by that. So give us 5 ohm. The student connects the ammeter to measure the current IP in resistor P. He then connects the ammeter to measure IQ in resistor Q. So the reading is shown below. So if you look at this, what is the reading across IP? This is the IP. And then this is IQ, the current. So looking at the two, what does it tell you? That means the one with the higher current is the one that have the lowest resistance. So that means the resistance of resistance 
of resistor Q is smaller than the resistance of resistor P because now a student suggests that the total current IT from B1 should be equal to IP plus IQ. So if you have this IT coming, the current coming divide into IP and IQ. So if I add this current, the current leaving is equal to the current coming to this junction here. So from the statement, state whether the result supports this suggestion. Justify your answer with to the value from your results. The result supports the suggestion. Now, what is the reason? If you look at the value we have, IT is 0 0.76, YIP plus that is 0 0.72 ampere. And if you look at the difference within the range of experimental accuracy, the difference between them is less than 10%. So once it's less than 10%, it can be accepted that it's equal because let's assume that there is slight error. So within the limit of experimental accuracy, 0 0.76 is approximately this value, 0 0.72. So it can be accepted that the result is correct. Now, a student carry out the sec the change in the circuit and use a variable resistor to control the current in the circuit so a real start now in the space provided draw the circuit symbol for a variable resistor a rectangle with an arrow piercing it so this is the symbol for a variable resistor now mark s on figure 3.1 this mark x where a variable resistor is connected to control the current in X. So if you look at it, S is connected in series. So to get a variable resistor, all we need to do is you can put it in any position on this line. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here. So anywhere, so we just mark our S, let's put it there. So the current in the circuit can be controlled by connecting a range of different resistor in place of resistor P and Q. State one disadvantage of this method instead of using a variable resistor to control. Now, if you start connecting different resistor at this wire and this wire, you are going to be dealing with a lot of values. So you cannot obtain a continuous set of value. Then secondly, it is less straightforward to change the current. Then thirdly, it's more difficult to obtain a greater number of values. So those are the disadvantages. Any of this one can serve. Okay, question four had to do with planning experimental investigation. A student investigates the effect of temperature on the bounce height of a squash ball. Now, a squash ball is a hollow rubber ball. Now, plan an experiment to investigate how the bounce height of the ball changes as the temperature of the ball rises. The apparatus available is selection of squash ball, standard laboratory heating, beaker, and then supply of cold water. Now, in your plan, you should list any additional apparatus needed. Explain briefly how to do the experiment, including any, any precaution to ensure reliable result. State the key variable to be kept constant. Draw a table, then explain how to use the reading. So these are the, the major points you need to consider. So major point one, major point two, the procedure, major point three, variable, Major point four, the table of value. Major point five, you have analysis, how to draw your conclusion. So let's see how we can plan each, this experiment. Let's take each of the points. So the first point we have, list any additional apparatus needed. 
If you look at what is given to you, you need to measure the height. What will you use to measure the height? It's not given to us, so you need a meter rule. Then, if you look at the apparatus given to us, we were not given what we use to measure the temperature. So you need the thermometer and the meter rule. So that is the first additional apparatus that are needed. So you need a thermometer to measure the temperature of the hot, hot water that you put the squash ball. Then you need a meter rule to measure the bounce height. So now let's look at the second thing. Explain briefly how you will do the experiment. So procedure. So now in the procedure, what will you do? So the first thing, we have the major point two. So the procedure, I heat ball in water long enough for like two minutes and keeping the measured temperature at 40 degrees. So I keep the temperature of the squash ball, the hot water, keep it constant at 40 degrees. So if I use a thermostat heating system to heat it and then put the squash ball inside the water and I make the temperature to get to that, to get the temperature of the system. Then next, I'll, I take out the squash ball immediately and then drop it from a constant height. I drop it from the height of one meter above the ground so I can now measure the rebounds to the height it will bounce to. Okay, then the next thing I use, I measure the height, each one of the bounce, I record it. Then I will repeat, I will repeat this value again, this procedure one to three. So I repeat the procedure for the same temperature and get the second bounce height. Then I will calculate the average of the bounce height. So H1 plus H2 divided by two. Now, the reason why you repeat experiments is to eliminate error. So that makes your experimental investigation more reliable. So that's one way you reliability in your measurements. Then what the next thing I'm going to do in this investigation is to increase the temperature to a higher value. So I can repeat it with a temperature of 55, 70, 90, and 100. For each of these temperature, I'm going to repeat the procedure one to, one to six. So I repeat this procedure and then measure the bounce height for the for 55 degree. I measure the first bounce height, second bounce height. Then for 70 degree, I measure the first bounce height, second bounce height for 85. So I will repeat the procedure one to six for each of them. So the next thing I'm going to do, now state the key variable to be kept constant from what we have been doing. One, the variable to keep constant. For stating this, you are going to get one mark. So the key variable to, keep, to maintain the same value. One, you have the, the drop height. Like in this one, I say, okay, 100 meter above the ground. Then use the same ball throughout or keep the diameter of the ball constant. Use the same ball. Then the same thing. Then the surface that the, bo the ball will be bounced on. So the surface that you will drop the ball on for before it will rebound. You have to keep the surface constant throughout the experiment. So any of this one, you measure, so for measure, for stating any of this reason, you have one mark. Then let's go to the next. So draw a table of value and make sure you put the heading. So what are the column? So the column and the unit of the column, for example, what are the major column? We have the temperature of the squash ball, like ours now, we did what? 40, 55, 70, and this, you but we don't necessarily need to write it. Then the next one is the bounce height. So we did it two times. So the first one, then the second bounce, then the average. So these are the value. So with this, you have your one mark for drawing this table. So the next thing is analysis of the... Okay. The last one, explain how you use the reading to, measure, to reach a conclusion. That is 
analysis that is a major point six in this uh, investigation or practical planning of investigation. Now, first thing, I compare reading in the table to see if change in temperature produce a change in the bounce height. The next one, I plotted a line graph of temperature against bounce height. So you have this, you can just do a sketch. And so what does it mean? As temperature increases, the bounce height increases. So that is a conclusion with that. We have come to the end of this uh, exam. So with this, we have come to the end of the practical. Subscribe to Super Easy Physics and Mathematics. And I wish you good luck as you prepare for your IGCSE physics. Subscribe and we will help you to easily upgrade your performance to an A+. CPAM is the solution to better grades.